Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna go over the Remo S Max. Now, this is a car that's shrouded in controversy. You know, there's there's been issues over this last few months about channels being blocked and all this because Traxxas, who builds the X Max, takes exception to this little car. And I'm pretty sure part of it's the name because it sounds really similar. Part of it is the body design which also looks very similar and the tread on the tires is eerily similar to the X Max as well. So I understand Traxxas being upset. However, going after a Chinese company is going to be awfully difficult. Now I'm not taking sides in this. Um, I think it's wrong to uh, actually take the intellectual copyright for something, say the artwork that has been worked so hard on to get the X Max to look the way it does, to shrink it down and stick it on a small car and just basically steal that, you know, that's not cool. But I'm going to stay out of that best I can. What we're here to do is put a brutal review on the S Max. So it's not, you know, we can't do a proper unboxing because I've had these things for months and I actually bought them just before I started the channel. and. I bought them so Tina and I could go out and goof around in the driveway without any risk of the car being so fast that we could break it all the time or we could hurt somebody with them because you know driveways are only so big. This car right here is perfect for that application and we have a lot of fun doing that. However, when we test these today, we're not playing in the driveway. So let's get it on the bench, we'll show you the radio, we'll show you what's inside the car and what powers it and then we're gonna take it out and we are gonna blast it. All right, guys, let's start off with the radio. And the radio is pretty cool. It is a Remo Hobby 2.4 gigahertz system, and it's pretty plain. The problem is that I find is it's big and clunky, and it's almost as big as the car. It does have one cool feature that most radios don't have. If you flip this switch right here, and it's right in here, flip that switch, you can push the wheel to the other side for left-handed driving. Now, it's nice that they took in consideration that not all of the population drives right-handed, so that's pretty cool. For me, it's not really useful. I do drive right-handed, so that's pretty nice. doesn't come with batteries, so you'll have to add four batteries for yourself, but it does have a good complement of controls with dual rates of reversing and, you know, the steering trims and that kind of thing. Other than that, a pretty simple radio. Now these cars themselves, they're fairly tiny. I've got, I'm six and a half feet tall. I've got pretty good sized hands, but I can almost completely cover the car with one hand. That's how tiny these things are. Now they're really small, but they're very cool. Now, like I said, there's issues with design and tire and all that stuff. We're gonna skip that and go straight to what makes this thing cool. Now inside this car, you'll see that it's got a motor it's got a combo speed control radio here and a servo. All of your linkages here are made out of just plastic. They're not adjustable. The arms are pretty substantial for the size, but it does not come with shocks. These are simply coil springs and not shock absorbers, so it bounces when you drop it. It does come with theme connectors, which are pretty nice um, for the amount of amperage that this thing draws, that's sufficient to do the job. Okay guys, so get a closer look at this car. This is the inside and it does have a brushed system in it. Now, what that means is it's a brushed system, it's not brushless, and it has a 390 size can in it. Now, 
the brush system is kind of nice it works pretty well and it works with lithium ion batteries and not lithium polymer so these are pretty good batteries this is 1500 milliamps and they run quite a while because the car doesn't weigh much but alongside of that this is four-wheel drive everything is connected the diffs are open I can only imagine what it would be like with them locked up it's such a short wheelbase it would probably swap ends really fast however it does seem to go pretty quick for the car that it is um, it's not overly powered it, like I say it does not have shock absorbers so it tends to bounce over things I do know that they sell a shock upgrade kit which would probably make this handle quite a bit better one other nice thing that comes with this kit is it came with two bodies per car so you got one that you can beat the crap out of one that you can keep looking nice for on the shelf and I was able to find both colors so I got a red one and a blue one so that we could have separate colors because it gets a bit a bit confusing when you have the same color car for two people so I was able to find the red and the blue so Tina has her color and I have mine so there you go hey guys let's get this outside and let's see what it'll do okay so here we are out at our local park and we are gonna take these uh, remos out for a run I got Tina with me and we're gonna have us a good time with this this video is designed to make them look cool and we'll go over them when we get back. So here we go. This is what's going on.
Okay guys, so there you have it. The 16th scale four-wheel drive Remo truck called the S-Max. Now, we took these out and we pounded them pretty good. We didn't hold anything back and what we did showed in the footage. And as you can tell, we're not really nice to our cars. Okay, and since we took these things out, Tina and I had a really good time with them. We ran one set of batteries through it and we didn't hold back at all. These little cars are surprisingly tough. So what I think of this car overall is for its size, it's an absolute monster. It really is cool. It's fairly tough. And you know, let's get straight into this with our four questions. Question one, was it fun? Absolutely. This thing was an utter blast. All right, and question number two, is the thing durable? Okay, so I've owned this thing for a number of months, like almost six months now. And this little car has taken literally everything I've thrown at it. Now we've gone out and played on the concrete with the big ramps. And of course, what you saw for jumps today was what we could get with a terrible run up. There was a lot of loose sand, uneven ground. It made it really difficult to get a good run up. However, when you run it on concrete, you run it on asphalt, you get a serious boost in speed and the distance is almost double. And we are talking good high elevations off the suicide ramp and it's a good time. So we've pounded them on that. We've actually played chicken with these where basically it's it. So what that means is this is the car to catch and we'll run this around and we'll get everybody out. And we're talking Creighton's outcasts, big cars, eight scalers geared up, ready to get it. And no one shies away. This is usually it. It's kind of tough to catch for the big cars, but when they catch them, they mow them over and it's really entertaining to watch. However, I have yet to break one part on either car and we're not afraid to go straight on with stuff. So these are exceptionally durable. Inside the arms are for the size of the car. They're fairly thick, but they still, they still flex a little bit. The connecting rods on the top, they're made out of a durable plastic that will flex, but not snap off the way, say a metal tie rod would. And you know, it could deal with a little larger tire. It's so close to the ground here. And what I mean is right in here, it's so close to the ground that it doesn't take too much to get high centered on, but that doesn't speak to durability. Durab durability wise, this thing is a monster. All right, guys, so that brings us to question number three. And the question is, is this worth the money? Now, this is a really inexpensive car and, you know, depending on your you know level of income, you know, this might still seem like something you have to save for, but it is well under a hundred dollars, or at least when I bought it, it was. So these ran right around $70 a piece when I purchased them. The price is obviously going to be a little higher today than it was then. However, for what you pay for, you get the radio, you get the car ready to run with the batteries and a small charger for $70. It is well worth every penny. And that brings us to question number four. How does this car stack up against the rest of my collection? And that can be a really tough thing to judge simply because I've got a very diverse collection from on-road to off-road from fifth scale all the way down to way small. So I don't know all the scales for all the cars, but they come from little tiny all the way up to fifth scale. And so it's hard to rate this against the other ones in that respect. However, I could rate it in the fact that how much do I enjoy playing with it? Well, this car really does rate pretty highly for me. It's a lot of fun in tight quarters. Uh, you know, if you, you can play with it in the house if you want to, it's a little quick for that, but you can do it in the driveway. It's well suited still. My driveway is a little longer than you'd expect for your standard, you know, suburban driveway. Um, so it does reach top speed before you get to the end of the driveway. So it feels just a little under, underpowered for speed in that long distance. However, for short turns and for short periods, this car is powered just about perfect. Now, how do I rate this against the other ones? Well, let's see. I really really enjoy taking the bigger cars out. Those just work for me. There's something about that that is cool. When I'm home alone and I just want to go out and putter around in the driveway for 15, 20 minutes or so, 
I'll throw one of these on the charger and I'll go out and I'll play for the afternoon. It doesn't take too long to charge one back up. I have two cars, charge both batteries, take one car out. Now the red one's mine and the blue one is Tina's. So, you know, I usually run the red one because, well, I don't want to break her car. However, we haven't broken one yet. So this, I would rate this, you know, it's got to be well below middle for me. This isn't a car that I would just grab to go bash. It's too small. I mean, if you rate it for size, here, check this out. If you want to rate it for size, that's the size car I enjoy running and bigger. Um, the little one, you know, you're too restricted as to where you can run it. Um, it does get hung up on sagebrush and weeds and, you know, anything tall, it'll, it'll snag on it, it'll hold it. it it's got a pretty low pretty low clearance down here so small items hang it up so if you're not running it on fairly good material and you know it does run well in the dirt and we were running in pretty hefty dirt today and we had a pretty good time with that but it did tend to get hung up on things quite a bit that's where the higher ground clearance the larger tires and the more power come into play and really if you think about it, if you're going to go run out in rough material you're going to go out in nature basically Really, the car you're going to want is the X-Max, not this little guy, but Traxxas's big car. That one will handle anything you throw at it because it is big enough to deal with it. You can climb over some logs, you can get over most rocks, you know, not vertical climb rocks, of course, but things that are in your road. Generally, you can get around them with the X-Max with no problem. This little guy everything that you run on has to be scaled down to that car's size so rocks tend to be about that big or smaller so you can handle those you can bounce off the big ones but the little ones can cause you difficulties in driving and they can hang you up so where would i put this car in the middle of my connection my collection and i would have to say that this car is going to wind up right about three quarters of the way down yes it is a blast and yes, it does run good, and yes, it is durable, but it's just not a car I'm going to grab every time I go. Okay, so those are the four questions, and we're going to ask three that we're going to rate them on. And the first one is durability. How does this car stack up for durability? Well, I didn't break anything on either car. We've had them for all of five months, if not more, and we have pounded these into everything. We've actually played tag with them, and they're still unbroken so as far as you know what it is for its size i'm gonna have to give this one nine out of ten on the second question you know is this thing worth the money well since it's well under a hundred dollars or was at the time of purchase i invested very little money in this car and pretty much got a complete system ready to go add batteries to the transmitter that being said you know, you're kind of limited as to where you can go with this car, but it's still going to get 9 out of 10 for cost to purchase price. And the final question on this one, where does it stack up? You know, how does this thing work out? I got to tell you, you know, this thing isn't rating really high with me. Yes, it's fun. And for younger drivers that are just getting into the hobby, this is absolutely perfect. But for someone that's more into it the way we are around here, these larger cars are definitely going to be my go-to. So this, I'm only going to give it 6 out of 10. Hey guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. It means more than you could possibly know. You know, we enjoy doing these videos, and this one was actually brought to us by a subscriber who had seen other videos and noticed this one in the background. Definitely... I listen, I pay attention to the comments, and I appreciate it when you guys have things to say. You know, let's try and keep it friendly. You know, this is supposed to be a happy channel where everybody can come and enjoy the hobby. In that vein, please feel free to leave comments that could help others or help me. It's a wonderful thing when you do. So until next time, look for us in the next video.